Hey guys, what's up? Connor here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a force op. So, you're going to make a new workspace in your Eclipse IDE, and I named mine force op under my development folder. Now, you guys are going to have to need, or you're going to, you guys are going to need some basic bucket knowledge to make this tutorial useful for yourself. You need to know how to compile your bucket plugin and drag it, drag it into your the plugins directory on your server or the server that you're trying to get up on so with that we are going to make a new java project and we're gonna call it force op so now we are going to make a new class and we're gonna put it under the package me.connorm.forceop do whatever package you'd like I'm only using me.connorm because that is my website check it out www.connorm.me yeah anyway um name this class is going to be main and like all java plugin main classes it's going to extend the java plugin super class however you guys are going to notice that this doesn't exist for you guys it's going to say that java plugin cannot be resolved to a type which is correct it can't because we don't have the bucket library in our build path so you guys are going to want to open up your web browser and go to dl.bucket.org. So once you're at dl.bucket.org, I'll leave that down in the description below. You guys are going to see this craft bucket recommended build. You do not want to download this. You're going to want to go right under that and you're going to see beta build 1.7.9 RO.2 19.5 megabytes. You're going to want to download that. So go ahead and click on that and it will download it. Go ahead and say keep and you're all good. Now you're going to see it's in your downloads folder. Yay! I'm going to put it out on my desktop. Now we're going to navigate to our build path. So right click on your project, go to build path, configure build path. Now we're going to navigate to our libraries tab. Let's add external jars. And you're going to see craft bucket 1.7.9 RO.2. Go ahead and click on that and boom, it's added to your build path. Go ahead and hit OK and we're all good. Now this should be resolved. And as you can see, we imported the Java plugin class from the bucket library. Now we're going to throw up an at override annotation. And we're going to put the or we're going to um, type out the method public void on enable. Now this method is invoked on the enable of our plugin. So we're going to let the console know that we are up and running. So we're going to say get logger.info and we're going to say plugin name has been enabled so you can put whatever you want there if you want to disguise your plugin as like an anti-grief plugin go ahead put whatever you want I don't care now we are going to put at override again we're going to throw up that at override annotation and we're going to put public void on disable now this method is invoked on the disable of our plugin and because I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy paste this over here and change it to disabled. So we're going to let the console know that our plugin has been disabled. So with that, we are going to make a new class. Now, this class is going to be called force op. And this class is going to implement the command executor interface from the bucket library. So we can import that. Now it'll say that we need to add some unimplemented methods and it's actually just going to be one method and it's public boolean on command. So this is going to tell us what commands are run and when. So basically we're going to say if arg1, which as you can see is the command that is being run, if arg1.getName, so if whatever command is being run, dot equals ignore case, so basically, um, regardless of the case, if it matches what I'm going to type out here, it's going to be return, returning true for that if statement. So if it equals dot op. So if someone runs a command slash dot op, then it will execute the code within this block. And we're going to say sender, which is arg0, as you can see, command sender, arg0 dot set op true. So that's that but we're not done yet so basically I'm gonna go over this one last time 
as you can see, if the command name is slash dot op, the slash you don't have to put there, but if it, if you see slash dot op, or if you type in slash dot op, then it will set you as an op. Nothing will be printed out to the server console. There's no way of knowing that you just run that, that you just um, executed that command. So, with that, we are done in this class, and we can go back to our main. So now on the enable, we are going to say git command dot. Or actually, the parameter that we are going to specify is the name of the command, which is dot op slash dot op to be exact. And we are going to say set executor to new force off new instance of our recently created command executor. So now we're done here. We're just going to make one last file. Now we are not making a class. We are not making an interface. We are not making an enum. We are not doing any of that. We're not making an annotation, none of that. We're just going to make a new file. So this file's name is going to be plugin.yml. And as you can see, I opened it in an external text editor. So if you do this, listen very carefully after I do what we need to do in here. Because if you do not listen to what I'm going to tell you after this, your entire plugin will not work. So the name of our plugin is force off, or whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to call mine force off. The version is 1.0, I'm just going to put 1, and the last thing that we need to specify is the main, which is main. So if you used a different package or a different main name, make sure you put that there. So now that we're done, we're going to save and close. Now, if you used an external editor like I did and not the built-in bucket one, as you can see, I can do that. It'll just say text editor, and I can edit it in here. But if you didn't do that, you're going to want to go up here and hit refresh. That'll just sync the whole file system of your Java project. And that's all, guys. So now you can just compile your plugin, and we're all good. So I hope this um, tutorial was of some use to you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. When I hit 500, we're going to be doing a 10-episode marathon in only one week. So that's right, we are going to have about one or two episodes per day, depending. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys very much. Sorry I've been gone for a while. Hopefully this makes up for it. Bye.